The visit of His Majesty the King to Jordan, Egypt and the UAE prior to the Arab summit came within the framework of His Majesty's keenness to develop bilateral relations and enhance joint Arab action. More in this report. With the aim of strengthening bilateral relations and discussing regional developments, especially the situation in the Gaza Strip, the visits of His Majesty the King to Jordan, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, ahead of the Arab Summit, which will be hosted by Bahrain on May 16th, came to coordinate in formulating a common vision that deepens existing relations and enhances Arab solidarity to confront challenges. On the 17th of April, His Majesty the King held a meeting with the Jordanian monarch during which they discussed ways to enhance cooperation and economic integration between the two countries, in addition to the political and security situation in the Middle East. The two monarchs stressed the necessity of the international community to implement immediate ceasefire decisions in the Gaza Strip. On the same day following the visit to Jordan, His Majesty the King visited Egypt, during which he held an official discussion session with the President of Egypt, in which they affirmed their commitment to enhancing bilateral cooperation, intensifying diplomatic efforts, working to find peaceful solutions to disputes, and continuing to combat terrorism and rejecting extremism. The two sides also called for preventing the escalation in the Middle East. On the 24th of April, His Majesty the King held discussions with the President of the UAE, during which they stressed the importance of continuing consultations and coordination in accordance with a unified strategic vision to achieve the interests of both countries and strengthen Gulf and Arab ties and international cooperation to spread peace and tolerance. The two sides hope that the upcoming Arab summit will produce positive results and constructive decisions that enhance Arab solidarity and unity. And on the 25th of April, His Majesty the King met with the Vice President of the UAE, where they discussed developing relations at all levels and the necessity of establishing peace, security and stability for the prosperity of the region. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Glebia Palace. The cabinet affirmed the importance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visits to the United Arab Emirates where His Majesty the King and the President of the United Arab Emirates His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan discussed the Bahrain UAE partnership and ways to further relations to meet mutual aspirations. The cabinet then congratulated the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on receiving the Development Pioneer Medal Award from the Arab Parliament for his significant contributions to national and Arab development initiatives. The cabinet emphasized his well-deserved recognition, noting his professional contributions to the kingdom's development across various national roles. On World Press Freedom Day, the cabinet commended local media and journalists recognizing their crucial role in promoting national development and expressing gratitude for their noble contributions to the kingdom's comprehensive development goals. On International Workers' Day, Labor Day, the cabinets recognized the efforts of the national workforce across sectors and thanked them for their contributions to the kingdom's achievements, emphasizing their role in driving excellence. The cabinet then discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee outlining several organizational procedures to develop the exhibitions and conferences sector. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law amending Article 20 of the Law on the Matter of Controlling Smoking and All Forms of Tobacco. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and Tidweer Group in the United Arab Emirates. 
a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an agreement on educational services between the University of Bahrain and Boston University in the United States of America. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and three laws submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Civil Defense Council regarding preparations for the expected rainfall in the oncoming days. The Cabinet also took note of the following ministerial reports, outcomes of the official visit of the Minister of Works to the United Kingdom, the external participation of ministers and foreign delegations to the Kingdom of Bahrain in May 2024. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed bin Salman Lim Salam and members of the Shura and Representatives Councils at the Gdaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister affirmed that the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is advancing steadily thanks to the passion and limitless ambition demonstrated by Team Bahrain and their determination for achievements. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad expressed pride in the successes of Bahraini citizens which have created the foundations of the Kingdom's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness highlighted the ongoing collaboration between members of Team Bahrain within the executive and legislative authorities and institutions in the private sector and civil societies, noting that cooperation is the basis for achievements across all sectors. His Royal Highness affirmed that providing quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens remains a pivotal goal for the Kingdom and that all development efforts revolve around this goal. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister underscored the Kingdom's commitment to implement a wide range of visions and plans to transform development ambitions into reality. Regional and global issues of common interest were also discussed as well as the latest developments in the Middle East, including the situation in the Gaza Strip. On the Gaza conflict, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister underscored the Kingdom of Bahrain's firm stance toward the Palestinian cause and its unwavering commitment to reaching a peaceful, lasting and fair solution in support of Palestinians' legitimate right to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad further outlined the importance of protecting civilian lives and de-escalating violence which threatens regional security and stability. For their part, the Speaker and the President of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry extended their appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his ongoing support to joint efforts between different factions of Team Bahrain. They further expressed their commitment to work towards achieving the Kingdom's wide-ranging development goals to benefit all. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and a number of senior officials also attended the meeting. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, met with his Qatari counterpart, Hassan al Ghanim, on the sidelines of the th sixth conference of the Arab Parliament and speakers of Arab councils and parliaments in Egypt. As Saleh affirmed that relations between Bahrain and Qatar are strengthened by fraternal ties and cooperation in development and parliamentary fields. He expressed pride in the support of Bahraini Qatari relations received from His Majesty the King and the Emir of Qatar. As Saleh affirmed the Council's interest in bolstering cooperation, the exchange of legislative expertise, and its utilization in achieving common interests. The Qatari Shura Council speaker expressed pride in the Bahraini Qatari relations, noting the keenness of the two Shura Councils on exchanging parliamentary visions and consultations on topics submitted in Arab and international parliamentary events.
The Shura Council chairman also held a joint parliamentary talks with the Speaker of Egypt's House of Representatives, Councillor Dr. Hanafi Jabali. Asaleh affirmed that the historic relations between Bahrain and Egypt are strengthened by cooperation, coordination, and the joint vision towards Arab causes, which fulfills the aspirations of His Majesty the King and the Egyptian President. He hailed Egypt's efforts in supporting Arab causes in its hosting of many Arab conferences and events, noting the continuous parliamentary cooperation between the legislative authorities and the two countries. Dr. Jibali affirmed his support to Bahrain's hosting of the Arab Summit, hailing its effective initiatives and steps to bolster Arab solidarity. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, held a meeting with the president of the Egyptian Senate, Councillor Abdel Wahab Abdel Razak, on the sidelines of the Arab Parliament's sixth conference of speakers of Arab councils and parliaments, which was held in Cairo. Assal affirmed that the strategic and brotherly ties between Bahrain and Egypt contribute to the sustainability of partnerships and cooperation and enriching the unique relations between the two countries. Councillor Abdel Razak noted that Bahrain and Egypt have a long record of joint achievements and notable successes in the development, economic and trade fields. He also stressed to continue working to achieve the common interests of the two countries. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa held a reception and dinner banquet to honor Bahraini citizens working and studying in Egypt on the occasion of his visit to the country. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that Bahraini citizens working and studying abroad are ambassadors to their country who introduce the world to their Arab and Islamic identity, history, prosperous president and achievements during the development march led by His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted that the determination and perseverance of people of Bahrain are the reasons for their success and their motivation to serve their country, develop it, and promote it in various events where they demonstrate the authentic Bahraini values of tolerance, coexistence, respect, and openness. The Deputy Prime Minister hailed all efforts to serve the Kingdom, to raise its status and contribute to its achievements, which stems from the government's interest in developing citizens' capabilities and skills and encouraging them to work diligently and make outstanding academic achievements. He stated that developed countries can only advance with the efforts of its loyal people who receive all forms of support. He urged those working and studying in Egypt to continue to work diligently and to prioritize serving their country. For their part, the guests expressed pride in meeting the Deputy Premier and thanks and appreciation for his initiatives. They also congratulated him on receiving the Development Pioneers Medal. In a press interview with Egypt's Middle East news agency, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa held the historical Bahraini Egyptian relations and their progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi. He appreciated the fruitful results of the recent summit in Cairo, affirming the mutual keenness of leadership of both countries to consolidate integration and strategic partnership and the conformity of diplomatic positions ahead of the Arab summit in Manama next May and their commitment in protecting Arab national security and supporting Arab rights and interests, foremost of which the Palestinian cause. 
Sheikh Khalid said that the visit of His Majesty the King to Egypt reflects the keenness of the two leadership to consolidate political, economic and commercial integration and the comprehensive strategic partnership of the benefit and development of both countries. He added that Bahrain joined the Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development alongside Egypt, UAE, Jordan and Morocco, which aims to achieve integration between the capabilities of these countries. He also said that Bahrain seeks to create Bahraini-Egyptian industrial partnerships and conclude purchase agreements and opportunities. The deputy premier added that organizing joint trade exhibitions will enhance the volume of bilateral trade and create an attractive environment for investors. He said that the two countries enjoy strong commercial and industrial relations with the volume of trade exchange between them reaching 571 million US dollars in 2023. The deputy premier stated that the challenges that the world has witnessed, such as the coronavirus pandemic, the Russian-Ukrainian war and the conflict in the region, require making further efforts to achieve cooperation in order to ensure the sustainability of resources in various economic sectors. He added that under the leadership of President Sisi, Egypt witnessed pioneering economic reforms that gained it confidence of global financial and monetary institutions. He stated that Bahrain appreciates all Egyptian efforts made towards economic reforms and attracting foreign investments and the progress that Egypt has made in this field. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah stated that Bahrain, an industrial investor, seek to increase the volume of investment in Egypt. He added that Bahrain and Egypt are keen to continue strategic cooperation and political and security coordination within the framework of a common and diplomatic vision that seeks to protect Arab national security and establish regional peace. The deputy premier stated that Bahrain expresses its appreciation for Egypt's honorable historical stances and its support for the security of the Arabian Gulf as it is an integral part of its national security. He added that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, takes pride to host the 33rd Arab Summit for the first time in its history in cooperation and coordination with the Arab League. He stated that ending warring conflicts peacefully is a priority through effective ceasefire action in the Gaza Strip, delivering humanitarian and relief aid to civilians and rejecting plans to attack Rafah or forcibly displacing residents from their land. The Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD, organized a symposium entitled The Process of Building and Progress, Bahrain as a Model, on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne with the Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the advisor to His Majesty the King for Media Affairs, Nabil Al Hamar, as speakers. During the symposium, the most important achievements that were made over 25 years were highlighted. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of BIPD, Ali al rumehi delivered a speech in which he highlighted Bahrain's experience and achievements over the past 25 years. He praised the efforts of those in charge of the National Action Charter Monument, which represents the achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King and reflects the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, SCIA President Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa received the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Elders, Councillor Mohammed Abdul Salam. The SCIA President hailed the efforts of the Council chaired by the General, by the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, His Eminence Professor Ahmed Al Tayyib, in defending the nation's causes and spreading the values of dialogue, tolerance, and coexistence. For his part, the Secretary General appreciated the efforts of Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, in promoting interfaith dialogue, peaceful coexistence, and serving the causes of Islamic and Muslims.
the Minister of Interior Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended a graduation ceremony for the first batch of the Technical Development Program. The program is considered one of the most prominent national pioneering projects. It was organized by the Ministry of Labor, the Information and E-Government Authority, Tamkeen and Bahrain Institute for Banking and Financial Studies. It contributes to achieving sustainability and competitiveness in the public and private sectors and provides quality opportunities for qualified Bahrainis and technical jobs. The minister hailed the directives of His Majesty the King for digital transformation and expanding e-services to achieve digital sustainability. He hailed the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to promote Bahrain's technical sector regionally and internationally through IT and telecommunication advancements per global standards. He said that the graduation of the first batch represents an added value to the National Electronic Foundation and contributes to achieving the strategic aspiration of the economic recovery plan. He highlighted the role of the Ministry of Education in providing the youth with digital training. He noted the role of the Information and E-Government Authority in providing more than 860 e-services and more than 20 national systems along with providing e-channels to facilitate uh, processing applications. He affirmed that the graduation would positively reflect on performance, speed of processing work and flexibility. He congratulated the graduates on the program's organizers and all partners. For his part, IGA CEO Mohamed al qaid discussed the details of the program and the efforts to achieve its success. He noted that Bahrain has been ranked among countries that possesses many trainees and certified individuals in cloud computing. The program was organized through on-the-job training in different technical directorates and fields. After completing the program, 41 participants have been employed, 24 of whom were recruited in the public sector and 17 in the private sector. A video about the program was screened, followed by the graduate speech. The Minister of Interior honored the partners, representatives of the government sector and companies, and the graduates. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in the joint ministerial meeting between GCC Foreign Affairs Ministers and the U.S. held in Riyadh. The GCC side was headed by the Qatari Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani. And the U.S. side was headed by the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Jassim Libdewi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the importance of the Gulf-U.S. partnership for the region in light of the conflicts and dangers which require continuous action and coordination for their impact on the stability of the region and to reduce regional escalation and to enhance a dialogue. He added that the focus should be on the situation in Gaza and there is urgent need to address the humanitarian crisis that has continued over six months, asserting that Gaza requires a reliable and implementable framework for the post-war era and a roadmap for Palestine and the region for peace, security and stability. During the meeting, aspects of the strategic partnership between the two sides were discussed and views were exchanged on the current situation in the region and its repercussions on regional security and stability. The President of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abd al al-Zayani, in the presence of the Syrian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr. Faisal al maqdad as part of the Foreign Affairs Minister's Arab tour. The Syrian President welcomed the Minister and asked him to convey his greetings and wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to Bahrain. 
The Syrian president commended Bahrain's hosting of the 33rd Arab Summit to be presided over by His Majesty the King, expressing confidence that the summit would successfully achieve the goals and aspirations of Arab leaders to consolidate Arab solidarity, strengthen cooperation and integration, and protect Arab national security. Dr. Zayani expressed pleasure with visiting Syria and meeting with the Syrian president. He conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness to the Syrian president and their wishes of abundant health and happiness and continued security and stability to Syria, praising the development and progress of bilateral cooperation. The caretaker Prime Minister of Lebanon, Najib Miqati, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Lebanon, Abdullah Abu Habib. Miqati welcomed the Minister of Lebanon and asked him to convey his greetings and wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and his wishes of further growth and prosperity to Bahrain. He praised the strong historical relations between Lebanon and Bahrain, emphasizing the commitment of the government of Lebanon to enhancing cooperation across various sectors. He expressed confidence in the success of the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Dr. Zayani expressed pleasure with visit in Lebanon and meeting with the caretaker Prime Minister. He conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and their wishes of abundant health and happiness and further progress and prosperity to Lebanon. Dr. Zayani praised the development and growth of cooperation across various domains. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Zayani, held a meeting with Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Assam Shukri, on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. They discussed the course of brotherly and historic ties between the two countries and means to develop cooperation to serve mutual goals and interests. They also discussed the war on the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip and the regional efforts aimed at achieving a ceasefire, protecting civilians, delivering humanitarian aid to the people of the Strip, releasing hostages and detainees, and establishing peace and security in the region. The two sides discussed the ongoing preparations for the upcoming 33rd Arab Summit, which will be held on May 16th. The summit's work program and the topics and issues scheduled to be included on the agenda of the Arab leaders' meeting. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Syrian Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates Dr. Faisal al maqdad The two parties discussed the strong historical relations between the two countries and the means to enhance cooperation. They also exchanged views on the current regional situation including the war in Gaza and its impact on regional security and stability. They also reviewed uh, the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit that will be hosted by Bahrain on May 16th and the topics and issues it will include on the agenda of the meeting of the Arab leaders.